All right, in this video, I'm gonna finish up the projects side of the app and work on our show page, our edit page, and also what happens when you do create a new project, kind of hook into making it look realistic. Right now we have it feeding through on our index page here. This is the root URL. And it, to create a new one, we have our view set up here. This still needs a little love too. I did include a gem that basically bundles a WYSIWYG editor, but I'm gonna to get to that after the, we finish up the rest of the views on this particular model. So I'm gonna dive right in. First thing I'm gonna work on is just the edit page. It's gonna have very similar HTML to this. So projects edit. And I'll just enter down and that. Okay, so that's all good and grand. This one I wanna to set to have a class title is two, great. And on top of that, the show page is gonna need the most love because it's gonna be kind of where the thing ends up. So I'll start real quick to get that going. All right, so our show view is pretty much intact. There's some stuff going on here that's probably new to you if you're just new to Rails, but uh, in essence, we have our project title, we're linking to the project team name, and then getting the path from the team through the project team. That sounds like a mouthful, but it, we're referencing the project itself because it has the team ID on it. So we're able to find that team ID because of it. And from that, we can link to an actual team that the project belongs to. We're getting the date it was created and the user who created it, and then how long ago it was modified using this time ago in words function. And then we have our edit and delete buttons. And then below the very bulk of everything will be the project description. And this will be what gets rendered out when actual content is added. Now by default, it's just text in this form and I want it to be a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna use a gem that is called the what you see is what you get Rails gem. And it's kind of a, just a ported version of a huge WYSIWYG editor that can go into a Rails application. So I'm gonna work on that next. So this is in our new view. I'm gonna make this first class title is two. So that's a little bigger. So this will append to this text field once we get it all set up. Things we need to do first are add some CSS and some JavaScript to our app. So let me go reference my old project. And I'm gonna first look at the CSS that we need. This one's gonna be in our application file. It's all of this, so it's a lot to import, but it actually requires all this to use every function within this WYSIWYG. Um, so I would say use what you need and don't use the rest because <laughs> there's so much. Uh, but I'm gonna just use it all because I don't really care about performance right now. And it also bundles with a ton of JavaScript stuff too. So I'm gonna do the same. So look at all those, that's nuts. So I'm gonna grab all those, including jQuery, which I added the gem for. That's right above here, those two. So if you install jQuery like I did, you'll want to add those as well. So these are going to go in our JavaScripts file, in our application.js, and I'm going to add this below TurboLinks. Great. So I think that's all we need. Um, we still need to initialize that actual text area though. So you can do that in, in this file or just create a new one if you want to for the, t the project directory itself. 
um, Rails will know to import the entire tree of lines here. So maybe I'll just do that in this case. So project.js. Actually, I'm going to make it projects. Rails likes to include CoffeeScript for that. I'm not a fan of CoffeeScript so much. So I'm just going to use traditional JavaScript here. You add a, an event listener, and then we use jQuery to find the product description ID, which is set default onto this since I named it description. And it's going to name it with the model right there. So the model is project, and its name is description. So that's how Rails does its naming conventions. And then you call this frol, frolia, frolia. <laughs> I can't really say it, editor but that's that gem that is the WYSIWYG. If all goes right, this should just come back as a crazy advanced editor. Maybe I need to add that to application after all. Let me try that, see if it works. There we go. So I guess that was the problem. I need to actually require that file into here and I'm gonna just go ahead and delete it now since I don't need it because this is all I'm writing for this project minus the view, which is in a different directory. Okay, so with that done, we have our WYSIWYG. We can, it'll grow as you type, so it's not stationary by any means. And you can add a ton of stuff, so it's pretty neat. You can insert links, images, video, uh, upload files. So I'm thinking it's, it's kind of like Basecamp in that regard, but not as nice in terms of UI, but Figures can't be choosers. How easy was that to install, you know? So at this point, you can just give it another t um, project. I'm logged in as John. So it's, um, I don't know, John's project. And say we add a bunch of content. I don't think I have it open, little Ipsum. Paste that in, it won't format it in inline sadly but it will on the front end if you just get it one space it'll add a paragraph tag on the front and that happens because on our show page which i probably didn't explain i should have project show there's this little parameter you can pass to your description that's called html safe and by default rails strips away any html that gets served from a form so you can tell Rails, hey, this stuff is safe. So go ahead and add that back as it comes through. So all your HTML will actually render, which is important for this to work. So I'm going to keep that as is. I'm going to add maybe an image, one of their defaults. They have some default stuff here. And I don't know, just mess around. You can round corners. That's crazy. Uh, and then align it left. You can add a caption. I don't know what that'll look like. I'm sure you can style each of these as you, you know, output it, but I'm going to add it to my team since I'm part of that team or John is part of that team and then hit create. And on the front end, we have what looks to be pretty close to what we want. I don't know what's going on here, but something isn't quite right. I think I forgot a span or something. Non-breaking space. I think that's what it is. Let's get rid of those. There we go. So that's more what I want. That is what our project looks like. Obviously you can tweak this to your heart's content and make it look all legit and stuff, but I'm just showing you how to add and edit. Uh, we can, apparently the team doesn't come back. Well, it, it remains on that team, so I think it's okay, but that's kind of a, a little error there. I'm gonna roll with it. So I created two projects, one's by me, one's by John. That one was the most recent. This is that one, some data, real cool project there. And then in this one, you'll see those projects are associated to this team, which is awesome. And if I were to log out and log in as myself, I'll see the same thing, only, you know, obviously different authors. Great, so up next is just this activity timeline. And then from there, I think we're gonna call it done. I'm gonna add real quick these links back to our application layout file. They're just commented out, but they're, they just link to the new paths that are created for our models. 
So they should be there now. Project team, and then you can just go create a new team or project. There we go. And if you wanna use some CSS to make this taller to start with, you can, I just didn't do it. But we have a count for our projects and account for our teams based on the user that's signed in. Uh, and yeah, the next video, I'll definitely work on this activity timeline. We're gonna use a gem to make it all work and it's pretty straightforward. So look forward to seeing you in that one.